Andy Dufresne, a banker, was convicted of murdering his wife and her lover, a golf pro. Although Andy kept claiming his innocence, all the evidences were against him. Thus, he was given two consecutive life sentences and will be sent to the notoriously harsh Shawshank prison. After a month in the prison, Andy approached Red after having heard of his ability to smuggle things for inmates. He asked Red to find him a rock hammer for the purpose of rock collecting and sculpting. While on the tarring job, Andy overheard Hadley, the chief guard, complaining about having to pay taxes for an upcoming inheritance. He then offered to assist Hadley in sheltering his money from the IRS in exchange for some cold beers for his fellow inmates. By doing so, Andy successfully gained favor of the prison guards as well as his inmates. The warden heard about how Andy helped Hadley and uses a surprise cell inspection to size Andy up. Andy was then reassigned to work in the prison library with the aging inmate, Brooks Hatlin. The real reason behind his transfer was to exploit his knowledge in the banking system to provide financial advice to the prison guards. Even the warden himself had Andy preparing his tax returns. Not long afterwards, Brooks threatened to kill Haywood in order to avoid being paroled. Brooks had become institutionalized after spending 50 years in Shawshank. He was so used to being a prisoner that he was unable to adapt to the outside world. Still, Brooks was paroled and given a job at a supermarket, which he hates. Finding it impossible to adjust to life outside of the prison, he eventually committed suicide. Not long after, Red had a new parole hearing. He used the exact same words that he used 10 years earlier only with no enthusiasm at all. Meanwhile, Andy's job was to launder the filthy money the warden made by setting up several accounts in several banks, along with several investments, by using the fake identity of Randall Stevens, which was created by Andy himself. In 1965, a young prisoner named Tommy comes to Shawshank to serve time for breaking and entering. Tommy asked Red about Andy's case, which Red explained. Upon hearing the story, Tommy was totally shocked. He then told Andy and read the story of a former cellmate of his from another prison who boasted about killing a man who was a pro golfer, along with his lover. The woman's husband, a banker, had been scapegoated. Obviously, the banker refers to Andy. With this new information, Andy met with the warden, expecting the warden would help him to get a new trial with Tommy as a witness. However, the reaction from the warden was completely contrary to what Andy hoped for. After that, Tommy had been called to have a private meeting with the warden. Unfortunately, the intention of this meeting was to kill Tommy, the only witness so that Andy would remain in the prison to help the warden with money laundry. One day, Andy talked about his plan after he gets out of prison. He mentions a Watanao, a beach town on the Pacific coast of Mexico where he'd like to live for the rest of his life and manage a hotel there. He invited Red to join him, although Red did not believe that they would be able to get free again. Get busy living. You get busy dying. After getting his job done for the day, Andy went back to his cell. This was his usual routine, except that something was going through his mind on that day. The following morning, Andy had not answered the morning call. The prison guard went on to check him out only to find out that Andy had gone missing. The warden rushed to Andy's empty cell in anger and frustration. He started throwing Andy's sculpted rocks around the cell. When he threw one at Andy's poster, the rock punched through and into the wall. Only then, he found out that Andy had secretly dug a tunnel. How did Andy do it? Not long after receiving his rock hammer, Andy innocently tried to carve his name on his cell wall, but a chunk of it accidentally came off. Andy immediately realized that it is possible for him to dig a hole in case he ever needed to escape. Andy first ordered the giant poster of Rita Hayworth to cover the hole. He then spent years digging at night with his rock hammer. The tunnel he'd excavated led him to a space between two walls of the prison where he found a sewer main line. After crawling through 500 yards of the raw sewage contained in the pipe, Andy emerged in a brick outside the walls. At this moment, he knew that he was free. While the warden and prison guards were busy searching for Andy, he was at the main national bank, 
where he had put the warden's money. Using his assumed identity as Randall Stevens, and with all the necessary documentation, he closed the account and walked out with a cashier's check. He continued his visits to other local banks and ended up gaining $370,000. The package containing Warden's accounting books was delivered straight to the Portland Daily Bugle newspaper along with Andy's written confessions and testimony. Not long after, the Maine State Police stormed Shawshank Prison along with several reporters to cover the developing story. The chief guard was arrested for the murder of Tommy. On the other hand, the warden committed suicide. At Red's last parole hearing, he didn't really seek parole. He didn't say what he thought the board wanted to hear. Red had accepted his punishment and the responsibility for his terrible crime. He had become completely repentant. Just by that, his parole was finally granted. He went to live and work at the same place that Brooks did. He thought of breaking the parole to get himself back into prison because he had also become institutionalized like how Brooks did. Fortunately, he still remembered the promise he made to Andy. Red took a bus to Fort Hancock, where he crossed into Mexico. The two friends were finally reunited on a beach of the Pacific coast, just like what Andy had been hoping for.